where they can get this help, where they can get the deliverance they need. We've got, the Bible said, no greater love hath a man than that he would lay down his life for a friend. And you know what? God's not asking us, at this time anyways, to lay down our physical life. But what he's asking us to do is to lay down our will, Brother Bob. He's asking us to lay down what we would want to do with this life, Mary. And he's asking us to do what he would want to do through us. Because God has a plan and he has a purpose. And if we're his body, if we're his hands extended to reach the lost, to reach the world, to see people set free, to see people healed and delivered, then we have to lay down our will. We can't do what we want to. That's that's why Jesus, when he came, he said, I didn't come to do my will, but I came to do the will of the Father that sent me. He came to give his life that we could have life. And that's what he did. He said, I only do what I see my Father do, and I only say what I hear my Father say. And God tells us to be imitators of him. So we're supposed to do what the Father shows us to do and say what he gives us to say. Let me tell you something. God is on the move. God is on the move. In this place, God is on the move. In the body of Christ that want to move. Like I told you last Sunday, the Lord gave me a message and he said, we're moving. We are moving. And we are moving. We're moving up to spiritual places in God. We're moving to higher places. And you know what? Those that will seek him, those that will come after him, those that will be hungry after God, you're going to see you know, I walked in here this morning, and the, you know, I've been teaching on how that we are creative beings, and how that that God has made us in His image, and we have the creative ability in us. And I'm going to minister on part two today. But I walked in here today, and as we were, as they were trying to set up the cameras or whatever they were doing, I began to speak to every seat in this place, and I began to say, "You are filled. You are filled. You are filled. You are filled with hungry people." But I'm telling you, 
God said, we're on the move. We're moving up. We're moving. So we got to get in and listen to what the Word of God is saying if we want to have what God is doing in our lives and in this place. Oh, let me tell you something. It's not limited to these four walls. It's not limited. When we had our church in Auburn, I began to stand in the pulpit and I began to say, this Word that I'm ministering is going out to the nations. I was speaking that out. And it's just like you throw a pen out and it's landing somewhere. Your words are powerful. You are created beings. Okay. And I began to confess that when I stood up to speak. I said, these messages are going to the nations. And one day I met a woman. And she said, if you'll give me your tapes. She said, I'll listen to them. And if you'll give me your messages, I'll take them to the nations with me. And she did that. She did that until I stopped sending them to her. So I said, guess what? I'm going to get in touch with them and see if we can send these to the nations with her again. She's still going. She didn't stop. We stopped. We stopped. There's no stopping place in God. There should be no stopping place. Amen. If anybody stops, it's us. It's not God, it's us. And God said, we, we are moving. He's moving. He's moving. And He wants everyone to up and move with Him. When He says, go, go. When He says, we're going to stop, just like the cloud by day and yes, the fire by amen. night. When the cloud by day was moving, when they fire by night, they were stationed. They were they were camping. But when the cloud moved, they moved with the cloud. Amen. And we need to begin to move with the cloud. We need to begin to move with the presence of God. Wherever He wants to take us. Wherever He wants to take us. I want to go. I don't want to be. They sing a worship song. Uh, I don't even know the name of it. It talks about, if you don't go, I don't want to go. Wherever your presence isn't, I don't want to go. I want to be where the presence of God is. Okay, I'm going to try to get in the message here. You are a creative being, part two. I tell you what, God is, God is, he's awesome. He is awesome. There's nothing God won't do for us. There's nothing that God won't do for us. Amen. He wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could think or even ask. And I like what Jesse DePlantis said. If you need something, God don't have it. He'll make it for you. He'll make it for you. Because we have a Heavenly Father that loves us more than we can even comprehend. I, I believe it takes a revelation to understand the love of God. I'm going to recap a little bit of Friday night because I know some of you weren't here and you didn't get to hear this message, but it's called You Are a Creative Being. And the Lord spoke to me and He was talking about using directives. And as I told them, I said I didn't really even know what a directive was, so I had to look that up. But I like it when God gives me words that I don't know. That's okay. You know, I said I don't even have to tell people that He gave it to me. I look really, really smart. But I like to give Him credit when He does. He said a directive is an authoritative instruction, a command, an order, a decree, a charge. This is what God uses. Directives. And this is what He's wanting us to use. In Genesis 1 and 26... And God said, let us make man in our image, our own image, and after our own likeness. And God is called the creator of the universe. And if God is a creator, and he created the universe, and he created everything in this world, and he made us in his likeness, and he made us in his image, then we are what? Creative beings. We are creative beings. I, I just don't think we get that. I don't think we really understand that. I think, you know, I asked the Lord to just revelate our hearts. And Ephesians talks about, you know, giving us revelations and wisdom and the knowledge of God. And I think we need that where the Word of God is concerned so that we can really get it. Because, see, if a Word of God is ministered to you and you don't get it and you don't understand it, that's the seed that the enemy in Matthew 13 chapter talks about how the enemy is going to come and he's going to steal that seed. Because it didn't take root in you. You didn't digest it. You didn't meditate. You didn't understand it. If you don't understand it, it's easy for the enemy to come and take that from you and then it doesn't profit you so that's why I say Lord give us revelation wisdom and knowledge God is the creator of the universe and he has made us creative beings Romans 8 and 17 says and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ 
And I'm kind of, I'm going to go through these a little bit quickly because I'm just recapping some of these scriptures from Friday night just to kind of get you up to speed where we're at. Ephesians 5 and 21 in the English Standard Version says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. And how does God change things? When he looked out into darkness, how did he change things? He used words, the words that he spoke. He said, light be, let there be light. He said in Genesis 1, it says 1 and 3, and God said, let there be light. He used a directive. He used a command. He used a decree. He was decreeing this to be. And when God speaks, it happens. It happens. It's not going to not happen because he's the creator. He created all things. It's not in him not to create. See, we think in our own natural mind, we just see us as, the enemy likes us to see ourselves as just, you know, we're just flesh, we're just flesh and bones, we're just, we're really not a lot, and that's what the enemy wants us to think, but that's not the case. We have this amazing ability of God in the very midst of us. We are creators. Hebrews 11 and 3. Hebrews 11 and 3. <clears throat> Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. It says, through faith, we understand. See, I, I believe it even takes faith. It just takes faith for us to even understand that the worlds were framed by words. Our words are so powerful. Our words are so powerful that our bodies and our lives will begin to line up to what we say repetitively. We say something over and over, your body and your life is going to line up with that. It's like I told you the testimony of the woman that had the fever, that she always had a temperature. It was in Charles Capp's book. You can read it. He talks about this woman. He said she always had a temperature. She went to the doctor because she said, I, I can't get rid of this temperature. And they began, they said they, they did some tests and stuff, and, and she, there was no reason for her to have a temperature. So when they began to study things, they began to see that her words were this on a regular basis. If something upset her or something, you know, didn't go her way, she was always saying, that just burns me up. That just burns me up. That just burns me up. And I forgot to tell this part. When they got her to stop saying that, the temperature left her body. So, proven that your words, your body... Your life is going to line up to your words. You just want to speak negative. You want to speak defeat. You'll have that. But if you want to speak positive, you want to speak powerful things in your life, you can have that. Our words are the seeds. They are seeds that are being sown and they will produce after their kind. Genesis 1 and 11 says, and, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herbs yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its own kind, whose seed is in itself, and it was so. The seed is in itself. Your words are seeds. So whatever you're sowing is what you're going to get. Like I said, you're not going to go out in the field and plant corn or tomatoes and get cucumbers. That's just not going to happen. So you can't sow negative things and get positive things in your life. So we have to make sure that we're sowing positive things. Sow the word of God. Matthew, Matthew 12 and 35 in the NLT, which is New Living Translation, says, A good man produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. See, you got good things in, good things are coming out. Because the Bible said from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You got bad things in, good things aren't coming out. So that's why Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Guard your heart. Make sure what you're putting in there is good stuff so that when it does come out of your mouth, it's going to be good for your life because you're going to eat it. You're going to eat the fruit thereof. He said, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Words are so powerful. You know, when I was writing this message down, this is what I began to see. We need to begin to use them, these seeds, these words as super seeds. We want big things in our life. We want God to do big things for us. Let's begin to sow some big seeds. Let's begin to speak. Let's begin to speak above what we, let's speak things that will take us out of our comfort zone. You say, what are you talking about? Well, if you have desired to do something for God or you want to be something big in the ministry and you feel like God is calling you into that, begin to call that forth. 
forth. Begin to speak these things out. Begin to speak yourself out of this 10-inch frying pan. Amen. And I say that because there was, I heard a story about this woman that she used to have this little 10-inch frying pan. And whenever she'd go to fix something, she'd cut off the pieces. And, and they said, uh, well, why are you cutting? This man said, why are you cutting off the pieces of this whatever they were making? And he said, she said, well, because... Uh, well, that's how mom did it. That's how they did it back in the day. You guys probably heard this, but I really like it because the final thing was he's like, well, why don't we, uh, why don't we ask why? They always cut the ends off this piece because it looks like you're wasting a bunch of meat here. And then it come down to this, that the mom cut these ends off because she only had a 10-inch frying pan. She didn't have a pan big enough to fix the whole piece of meat, whatever it was. But see, they, the, the children saw this, and that's all they got in their mind was, we got to cut all this off because we got, we got to just have this certain amount. And that's not even the way it is, but that's how the enemy would have us think. And if we don't come out of our 10-inch frying pan mentality, we're going to lose the pieces that we're cutting off. So we got to come out of a 10-inch frying pan mentality to get to the places that God wants to take us to. Amen. We have to have a mentality change. That's why Romans 12 and 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when we renew our mind in the Word of God, and we begin to think like God wants us to think, and like God thinks, God is thinking big. He said, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are so much higher than your ways. And if we begin to think just a little bit of how God thinks we're going to think so much bigger than what we think in our natural minds and our natural abilities but God has made us as creative and you know what you can begin to think things and you can begin to say or rather say things and it'll bring your thinking up your your vocabulary will bring your thinking up we need to begin to say I can do this I can do this I can do this I can do these things in God I was reading a book by uh, Norman Vincent Peale, and he was talking about how that, uh, he's, it's called The Power of Positive Thinking. And John's brother gave this to me years and years, I, when we first got married, I'd say, so it's been over 30-something years ago. But the man was talking about power, the power of positive thinking, and he had a man come to him once, and the man was had a, a big deal that he had to do. He, had, he was getting ready to make a big decision and make a big deal. And he went to him and he said, but I just, I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I feel like I'm going to fail. And if I fail, it's going to cost me everything. He had no self-confidence. He had an inferiority complex. And you know what? Norman Vincent Peale took him aside. And the thing, the greatest thing that he began to say to him was, and he said this had been tried in many lives and had been proven to work. He began to tell him, to speak, and I believe it was in 1 Corinthians, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. He said, you say that three times before you get out of bed. You say that before you, when you're at, at lunch. You say that through the day. You say that at bedtime. You begin to say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And he had him begin to say that right there in his setting. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And he had the man begin to say that. And the man began to kind of straighten his shoulders back. And he began to look like he had confidence in himself. And now all of a sudden, guess what he's feeling like? He's not going to fail on this deal because now he's beginning to feel his spirit, his body is beginning to line up with the words that he's speaking. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I don't have to worry about this deal going south. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's about who's on the inside of us. He said, don't lean to your own understanding. But he said, look unto God. Lean not to the arm of the flesh, but we are to lean to God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, that is on the inside of us. <coughs> I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Whenever you feel like the enemy's beating you up and you're having a bad day, begin just to say, I can do all things. No, you know what? Before the enemy ever gets to your door, you begin to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Find yourself some scriptures and begin to quote them on a daily basis. Get them in your spirit. You want to get bigger? You want to get bigger on the inside? Get you some bigger scriptures. Get you some bigger scriptures. Find something that just kind of makes you tremble when you read it. And you go, oh, that's bigger than me. Oh, that seems bigger than me. And you begin to say it. And guess what? The inside of you, your whole life is going to line up with the words 
that you're saying. I read about this woman, how she was talking about her son. She was talking about her son that just felt like he was inadequate in school and felt like he couldn't do enough. He felt like he couldn't get to the place where he needed to get good grades in that. And she began to read the story about the little train, the engine that said, I could, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And she began to tell him, you can do this, you can do this. She began to say, I can do this, I can do this. And you know what? He began to do things that he couldn't do before because of the words of his mouth. Not only will the words of your mouth change the things of your, your body, life will begin to line up and things will begin to come Amen. your way. But I tell you what, not only that, but your thinking will begin to come up to such a level and you'll begin to do things you never did before. You want to do something you've never done? Begin to say it. Begin to confess Confess this in your life so that you can come up to higher places. We are never going to come up to higher places in God if we keep the, the words that we're speaking all the time. You know what they said insanity is? It's doing the same thing and expecting a different result. How can you do the same thing and expect something different? Well, that is insane if you ask me. And God is saying if you want bigger, he said I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can think or ask according to the power that's in you. What power do you have in you? Creative ability. Because you have the creator of the universe on the inside of you. And this is the power of God that we have on the inside of us. We have creative ability on the inside of us. And we can create and we can change our world. Our world. You say, that sounds crazy. It's okay. You don't have to believe it. Remember what I told you about the guy with the cigarettes? He didn't believe it. When Pastor Keith Moore was telling him, just begin to confess that you are free. Just begin to confess. When you light it up, when you buy it, when you're smoking, confess that you're free. And he said, oh, this is crazy, in other words. Never heard of this. this I've, I've been prayed for. I've done everything. No, he said, just try this. So the guy tried it. When he buy them, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free from cigarettes. When he smoke them, I'm free from cigarettes. He didn't even believe in himself. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? When you begin to confess these things of God, you don't have to believe them. You don't have to believe. Your mind doesn't have to believe it. Because guess what? Your life and your body's going to line up if you keep speaking it. He began to keep speaking that for two weeks. And one day he realized, I am free. He didn't need them anymore. He didn't desire them anymore. Because his body, everything in him, began to line up with what he was saying. Even though his mind didn't believe him, his body began to line up. And he got free. And he was free from cigarettes. And this is what I'm saying about the super seeds, the power seeds. Oh, we need to begin to speak the, the bigger things, the greater things in God. Amos 9 and 13 says this. Amos 9 and 13. And if I, I'm going pretty quick here. I know because I've got them wrote down. The time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested. And one commentary said this, So great shall be the vintage that before the ones that tread upon the grapes can even finish their work, the seed men are sowing for the next season. That means you're going to begin to speak things and you're going to already begin to see a harvest I feel like the Lord is really going to do a quick work in these last days. So we can begin to speak things and we can begin to see a harvest. You know how we feel like it took so long to speak and speak and speak and get a harvest? Well, I don't believe it's going to be like that. I believe that we are on the move in God and God is on the move in us. And we are going to begin to confess these things and we're going to begin to see them come quickly. We're going to begin to see them come quickly even before we can start sowing more seeds for different things in our life. We're going to start seeing some harvests off the seeds that we're sowing. Does that make sense? Amen. Habakkuk 1 and 5 in the NIV says, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe yes. even if you were told. Amen. God is on That's the move. Amen. Oh, I can't say that enough. 
God is on the move. Remember last Sunday's message? I believe it was last Sunday where he told me we're on the move. Stay close, stay clean, and stay clear so that God can give you instructions on what to decree. There's some things that God needs us as the body of Christ to declare and decree in the nations, in the world. You say, I'm just a small. No, don't even see yourself as small. You see yourself as a part of the body of Christ. You see yourself as part of the body of Christ in the kingdom of God. When the Berlin Wall, before the Berlin Wall fell, I heard Kenneth Copeland talking about how the Lord used him to prophesy over that wall. How that God may need somebody to prophesy over who knows what in this world. But we got to be close, clean from the world, and clear to hear what God is saying so that when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, it may be over this nation. It may be over somewhere across the globe. We've never been to. It doesn't matter. There's no distance in God. And God may need us to begin in the midnight hour to begin to declare and decree something in a nation. And guess what? God will bring it to pass. Amen. If God can use you, if we will let God use our mouths, if he will, we will let him use us all yes, as part amen. of the body of Christ, then God get the work done that he needs done in these last days. Oh, that's why we can't sit in our sealed houses and just say, oh, what was me? But we got to get out. We got to be in a place where God can begin to use us. That's right. Oh, God wants to use the body, every one of us. You know what? Your body as a whole, it's like this, your hand. If you're missing a finger, you know that. You know that. And I'm, I'm convinced that, you know what, when you go to reach, it's, it's different. It's different. And it's like us in the body of Christ. God needs each one of us. I may be the little toe. I don't know. I don't know. We may be an arm. We may be, who knows where. He puts us in the body as he sees fit. You may be a heart. You may be a lung. And we think that these parts are so vital, and they are. But so are the feet, the toes, the hands, the ears, the nose. Everyone is important in the body. And God needs us. Amen. He needs to be able to use us for his glory and for the kingdom of God. In Job, Job 22 and 28, he said, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. You, right here, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. Remember, your words are forces that are changing your life, your world, the things around you. Genesis 1 and 6 said, and this, and I'm just going to, just this is out of my words. God spoke the firmament into existence by words only because he is a creative being. His words as directives, he used his words as directives and they worked for him. We must imitate God. The world was made out of things you cannot see. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. By the word of God so that things which are not seen were not made which, let me start over here. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And let me read that in a different translation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible or seeable. The world was created by words. You can't see a word, can you? Can you see a word? Can we see a word? We can't see a word. But we can see the results of a word. We have light in the world around us because God's words. And it's just like this. We can speak these things and we see these come to pass in our life. We don't see the word. Words are a vehicle. Words are a vehicle to get out there what we're trying to produce for the harvest. So we need to speak these words. We need to sow these word seeds. I like to call them seeds. Hebrews 1 and 3. He is the radiance of the glory of God. And this is in the English Standard Version. Hebrews 1 and 3. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. 
and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Now, when I read that scripture, it kind of, I said it just kind of throws me a little bit. It sounds like there's a play on words a little bit. Because I like to say power of his word. But he said, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. His power is in his words. Words are very powerful. If the power is in the word, then that's where the power, that's, I mean, can you imagine how powerful if we could even see it? If we could see it measured. Wow. I, I know it would just amaze us. And I was, I was sharing this with Stephanie last night. This is some part she shared with me. I said, well, I probably won't be impressed, but I probably will. Like a king, she said, all of his power and his authority goes into his words when he speaks. And this is how, this is how he gets things done. He speaks. And this works in us because we're created beings. And I went on after, after we discussed that, and this is some of the scriptures that I felt like the Lord had added to the message. In Revelations 5 and 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So if a king speaks, and his power is in his word, Jesus is the king of kings, and his power is in his word. And he's made us kings and priests unto him. So where's the power? In our words. It's in our words. We don't have, we don't have power anywhere else. I mean, you talk about a physical power. Uh, in the natural, people give people power and authority. Like a policeman, they have the power. <coughs> they have the authority, rather. They don't have the physical power to stop a vehicle. Probably most of them don't. But they have the authority that they can walk up and put their hand out. And they'll stop that vehicle. They'll stop 3,000 pound vehicle, truck, whatever. Even though they physically can't do this. And see, that's like us with our words. He's given us the power and the authority in our words. And we can speak and we can create and we can change things. And we need to use these words. And this is in God's word translation on Re Revelations 5 and 10. You made them a kingdom and priests for our God. They will rule as kings on earth. We're supposed to be ruling here. We're supposed to be writing. We're supposed to be using the words that we speak to control the circumstances around us and the situations around us. And we look out and we say, oh, it's so dark. Have you seen all the trouble over here? Have you seen all the chaos over here? Have you seen all of this going on over here? And that's what we're speaking. You know why? Because we're listening to the news. We're listening to the news media. And that's what's getting on the inside of us. And what did I read to you out of Matthew? He said, out of the, a good man produces good things from the treasury of a good heart and an evil man produces evil things or negative things. It doesn't have to be wicked like sinful, but I'm just talking about negative things. And whatever goes on the inside of us, that's what's going to come out of us. Amen. And if we're speaking to each other all the time about the bad that's going on in someone's life, have you ever seen all this, 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 yes, this, this, this? Let's begin to speak everything positive. Let's just begin to set a watch over our mouth and begin to speak only positive things. Let's begin to only allow positive things in our house. Let's begin to only allow positive things on our phones. Let's begin to only allow positive of things to come to us. Amen. I can tell you, we went to church with a guy down in Branson, and he was he taught in the healing school, and he said that he would sit up at night. He began, he watched the news at 11 o'clock at night, faithful. He was faithful. He said he began to have problems sleeping. He said he went to the doctor. And the doctor told him, you know what the doctor told him? Quit watching the news. If that's what's troubling you. If that's what's causing you to have all this anxiety. Because it will. I'm not trying to bash anybody for watching the news. I'm not trying to... You're, you live however you want to, but I'm just telling us how to get to a different level. We can't let these things in us. We cannot allow the world in and expect God things. Smith Wigglesworth was a man that wouldn't even allow a newspaper in his house. And how do we think the enemy is trying to get in? Or is getting in and defeating us? Negativity. We say, have you heard this? Have you heard this? Have you heard this? Have you heard this? And the enemy, just he'll keep it going. 
from this person to this person to this person to this person and we'll just keep speaking and we'll just keep speaking negativity. Let's try to speak some positive. Let's only focus on the positive things. Let's make a point to not focus on anything negative. If you have a negative situation, let's turn it around for positive. Let's turn it around for good. Let's begin to find the positive in the situation. And if you're going to speak on it, just speak on that. I tell you what, I've heard the preacher say, Ooh, I had a cold wave on that one. I felt a real cold wave on that other one. <laughs> I felt like, shh. But I'm not trying to bash anyone. I'm trying to tell us that if we want the things that God has for us, we have to begin to come out and come up. We have to live up. We have to live higher. He said, come out from among the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord. He wants us to come up, to stay close, to stay clean, and to stay clear so that we can hear him. Words are so powerful and creative that Jesus was born of a virgin the same way the universe was created with words. In Luke 1 and 35, the angel said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. These were the words of God. The words of God. Now Mary said this in Luke 1 and 38. Mary said, Be it unto me according to thy word. She received the words she heard, and then she spoke it out. Be it unto me. She heard, she received, and then she spoke. And that is how Jesus was formed on the inside of her. And he became a living, breathing, flesh being. Because she heard a word that was spoken to her. She received the word. And then she began to speak. Be it unto me. Be it unto me. And no doubt, she probably went telling that all over Maybe not at first, you know. She was a young virgin. She received the word that was spoken unto her. And the word of God that was formed in her and manifest through her and began to manifest through her physical body. John 1 and 14 says, The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. What word? The word the word that God spoke, the word that God spoke to Mary. The word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. Didn't he say that? The spoken word of God implanted in Mary's womb was the seed that took upon flesh, became a living, breathing man in this earth. God's word that's planted in your spirit causes you to cause you to become a new creature in Christ. Born again by the seed you heard preached, you received it, and guess what? You had to confess it. Amen. He said confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 10. For with the heart man believes, you have to hear, because he said you can't even hear without a preacher. So when these, these men of God are preaching, when we're preaching, and we hear, and we receive, he said, for the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You had to receive the word and confess it to be born again. First Peter talks about, First Peter 1 and 23 says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, not of the seed that you can see. You can't see this seed, the word of God. But he said, it's incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The seeds or the words that we sow are coming forth in our lives, good or bad. You know, we can say, well, this is my, what do we say? This is my arthritis. I got this, uh, I, I've seen people get on Facebook and they'll say, I need you to pray for me today because my, and they'll give their symptoms or they'll give their, their, their pain or whatever it is, my, my, this, my, pray for my. And you just kind of want to shake your head because it's like, I'm sure we've all done that. I've got allergies or I've got this or, you know, my, my, my. But I tell you, when you start sitting down and write out a message, you start seeing these things that you do yourself. 
If we receive thought seeds and begin to speak it, we can have it. We are sowing this seed into our lives and we bring it forth by speaking it out. What is in your life that you don't want? That you believed a doctor's report, a devil's report, or Google's report. I've heard people looking their symptoms up on Google and then they'll be like, oh, I got this. Or a police report. I'm going to share a testimony with you. We've got a little cat, and we love him dearly. And his name is Coda. And Coda has been with us for many years. And Coda has been through some things. And let me tell you something. We love him. And God has healed Coda several times. But when we were in Kentucky the first time, we took Coda. He started, I, I believe he started had something wrong with his ear. Yeah, he, he got something wrong with his ear and the doctors had to go in and they had to uh, release all the, the infection and stuff out of his ear. And when we, the doctor called John while they still had Coda and John was at work one day and they called him and they proceeded to tell Co him that Coda had feline leukemia. Now we've had two other cats in the past and several years ago when we lived in Auburn, they were stray cats that we kept, you know, they came in and we kept them and they died with feline leukemia. And Coda was a stray also. We found Coda in a tree. And uh, so the doctor proceeded to tell John that Coda had feline leukemia. And he had to make a decision right there. Whether he was going to give in to that report or he was going to believe God for healing for Coda. And he said in his telling this the other night that everything basically in him wanted to cry. He wanted to cry. Because he knew what feline leukemia does to a cat. And there's no cure for that that I'm aware of. And so he said, no, no, no. I'm not going to, he wasn't going to cry. But he was praying and he'd been fasting. And he prayed about him. And I believe he said the Lord spoke to him and said, he's, he's healed. I want to get that right. But you know, if he would have believed the doctor's report and just went with that, Coda wouldn't be with us today. I believe that. Mm -hmm. But he stood, and he stood on what the Lord had said and believing in prayer. And this was, this has been probably, I'm going to say four to five years ago. Well, when we was moving back from Branson and we were going to Kentucky, we had to have Coda, we had to go get his shots, and we had to have records showing that he was healthy. So we had to take him to the vet again. And, and you know what my thought was? My first thought was, I don't want to take him to the vet and have them say anything negative to me. Because after the doctor said that about Coda and we picked him up from the vet, he was never checked again. So we had to take it by faith that Coda was healed. And when we took Coda to the vet this time, because he had to have a shot, and the doctor had to check him all out and give us a record saying, yes, he could live in the apartment because, you know, he was healthy. Um... I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have came with Stephanie to take him to the bed. And I thought, no, no, I'm going to reject that thought. The doctor came in and he looked him over. He checked him out real good and he was giving him a shot. And he said, oh, that's a healthy big boy. <laughs> that's God. That's God. And you know what? We don't have to receive the reports that the world gives us. Amen. We don't have to take these and just go, this is my fate. This is what has come my way. But we do that because Romans 12 and 2 has not taken place in our life. We have not renewed our mind in the word of God, but we have conformed to the world and the world's way of thinking. And the world's way of thinking is this. Whatever the doctor says, if a doctor says it, and I know they're, they're strong words if a doctor tells you something. And I'm not saying anything against, I'm not preaching against doctors. Trust me. I've gone. I go to the doctor. If you don't, we don't have faith to be healed, get to the doctor. They can save your life in most cases. But what I'm saying is this. You don't have to, you don't, even if they give you a bad report, you don't have to let that be the end result in your life. You can begin to speak the word of God. We can begin to speak the positive things. We can use our mouth, the words of our mouth, to change our situation and to change our circumstances. But I tell you what. 
The pharmacies are loving. I, 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 when I went into Walmart, I'm like, oh my gosh, even at the pharmacy, they have thousands and thousands, it looks like, packs of pills and stuff, people ready to pick up. I'm not preaching against that either, because I'm talking about I want to pick up mine. <laughs> but I'm telling you that God is trying to get us to a place where we'll come up and out of where we are. I don't know about you, but I am ready to come up and out of where I've been. I want more in God. I said I want to be in a place where I am free from the things of, of, of the world. Yes, and amen. the enemy has bogged us down with you got this, you got that, you got this. I want freedom. I want to walk in the power of God. I want to walk in a place where God can just whisper. And I move. He just just wake you up through the night and he begins to just nudge you. He doesn't have to jar you and shake you and try to roll you out of the bed just to get your attention. But all he does is just... Just that, because you're so in tune with the presence of God. You're so in tune with the Holy Spirit. And he says, I need you to speak. I need you to speak over, over this nation. I need you to speak over this person's life. I need you to speak over this. I need you to say this. Because he needs a body. He needs a vessel to move in this earth. Because he gave man the power and the dominion in this earth. So man has that. Let me move on, because I still got a few pages here. <laughs> okay I believe we give the enemy too much power in our life by the words that we speak his words that he shoots as arrows in our mind Ephesians 6 and 16 says this in the New Living Translation it says in addition to all these hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. And you know what? I, I, sh I think I've shared this testimony before, but I was laying in the bed when we lived in, when off, when we lived in Auburn, and I was awoken through the night, and I felt like I was having a heart attack. I mean, I just felt just pains, and, and it was just coming at me. But you know what I heard? And the enemy was telling me, you're having a heart attack. You're having a heart attack. So, I mean, I raised up because I felt like I was having a heart attack. And I heard the Lord say, fiery darts of the wicked. He was shooting these thoughts, these words, these seeds. These, he was sowing, trying to get me hooked that I was having a heart attack. He was trying to hook me with these thoughts. You tell me he doesn't have words that he's going to shoot at you and try to sow into you and try to get that sown into your spirit so you'll speak it out? But when I heard those spirit of the Lord say, fiery darts of the wicked, I just laid back down and I went to sleep. We need to be close. We need to be clean. And we need to, to be clear to hear what the Spirit is trying to say to us. The enemy knows there's power in our words. And he tries very hard to get us to confess doubt, fear, and unbelief. But we need to watch our words. Proverbs 18 and 21 said in God's Word translation, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love to talk will have to eat their own words. Amen. I'm going to go through these extra scriptures. Oh, i got a few other scriptures here, but I'm kind of going to go through them quickly because I guess I've held this for a little bit. James 1, 26 and 27 in the New Living Translation says, If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are, you are fooling yourselves and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion is in the sight of God. The Father means caring for orphans and widows and in their distress in their distress, and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Amen. We have to refuse because the world will just come in. It'll come in like a big wave, and it'll just corrupt us if we don't stop it. We have to intentionally not let the world corrupt us. And the one scripture I've got here is Romans 12 and 2, which I already read that. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And let me just say this, the one last scripture David said. He said in Psalms 119 and 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. If we hide the word of God in our heart on a continual basis, guess what's going to come out of our mouth? Word. It's going to be the Word of God. So if we hide the Word of God in our heart, then we're not going to be sinning against the Lord. And you say, well, our words, I believe, cause us to sin against God because we're speaking negative. We're speaking contrary to what He's saying about us. So let's, let's be like David. Let's be like Psalms where he's talking about 
Your, I'll hide your word in there. Lord, I'll hide your word in my heart so that I won't sin with my mouth against you. That I'll confess your word. I'll confess the good things. Because God said, he said that he gave Jesus that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. He wants us to live a healthy, prosperous. He said, I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So he wants us to have the good things. He doesn't want us to be without. He doesn't want us to be out of, you know, in ill health. He doesn't want us to be tormented. He doesn't want us to be in bondage. He doesn't want any of this. He wants us free. Amen. So let's do this. Let's get the word of God in our heart. And let's begin to let God come forth in our lives. And let's reach up higher. And let's do the greater things. He said, these things that I have done, greater shall you do. Because I'm going to go away to the Father. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Greater things than these that he did. And he said, all things that he did in this world. He said, the things that he did. Let's see, how did he say it? If, the, if they were written in books, all the things that he did, the world could not contain the books if they were written. All the things that he did. And he said, greater things shall we do. Greater things shall we do. Let's look for the greater things as we're moving in God, as we're moving up into the things of God. I'm looking forward to what God has in store for us. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to what God. We have to be looking for something. He said he's coming back after those that have that are watching, those that are waiting, those that are, are ready. So the same with him, with us on the move. He's looking for those that are watching, that are paying attention, that are ready to move, that aren't just saying, you know, like I said, like a little kid, paying attention to everything but him. We have to be intentionally paying attention to what God is doing in our lives so that we can move into the higher things of God. He's got so much more for us. And with that, I'm close. Thank you all so much for watching. We hope that today's message truly blessed you. If you would like to be a part of helping us spread the gospel to others through our TV outreach ministry, please consider sowing your seed at www.thefaithalivechurch.org.